Hello and welcome to the lumbar spine PowerPoint. We're going to go over probably one of the more common exams that you'll do, not only as a student but as a tech as well. Um, the lumbar vertebra, pretty much the biggest vertebra within the body, um, which you'll see as we get into the slides. Whale, also very similar structures with transverse processes and spinous processes. Um, so the animal kingdom has quite a bit of similarities to us as, that we don't really think about. Vertebral column, this should look about the same as what we've been going over. Um, nothing has changed from the past couple uh, PowerPoints that we've done. The lumbar spine is the second compensatory curve. It has that lordotic kind of uh, curve towards it, similar to the cervical spine. Basically just to balance out the entire spine so the weight isn't as pressed on one particular area. If you look at the bottom of the lumbar spine, however, if you look in this area here, a lot of the pressure is always going because you're standing up and it will go down towards the L5, S1 area. So most people will have problems in this area when they complain of lower back pain. F5 lumbar vertebra, largest individual vertebra in the body. Also the strongest because of the load of the body, the weight increases towards the inferior end of the column. Basically all the way from up top is leading towards the spine having to be bigger to be able to support it at the lower back area. Common sites for path pathologic processes and injuries, L5 is the largest of the vertebra here. So they do generally get bigger from L1 to L5, but it's not a huge difference. It's very gradual. Just shows a little bit of the uh, anatomy on here. Should look very familiar to what we've already been covering. The areas we haven't talked about too much inferior articular process and the superior articular processes, those are kind of behind towards the back between the spinous processes and the transverse processes. So it shows a diagram of it. Spinous process, a little bit longer. It's going to be a little bit um, kind of flatter um, in comparison to the T-spine. Uh, vertebral body is still going to be kind of uh, blocky in shape. You're going to have the pedicles and then going towards the transverse processes and then the lamina making up that posterior portion of the arch. So it shows kind of an oblique view at it. Um, the vertebral foramen, the spinal cord, will terminate, I think, around L2 or 3, but I'm not positive on that. I'll have to double check that. Um, pedicles making up that front part of the arch and the rest of it, pretty much the same. Dressing instructions are prep everything off except lower underwear and socks. We don't want anything around the waist in terms of elastic because elastic is usually a little bit constricting, so you'll actually see the pattern right over the lumbar spine when you're looking at it. Uh, no chains around the waist. Uh, navel rings, pretty popular, so the navel ring sits right around L4 normally. Uh, no bras due to overlap of T12. We want to see that vertebra going superiorly as well. And we would rather not see the underwire at the very top of our AP image either. Um, exception for sweatpants, if it's elastic. If it's a thin elastic, then it's okay. But the thick, really tight, not so good. So shield for males, obviously the... Male organs are below the level of symphysis, so you can shield on the AP for them. Females, unfortunately, can't be shielded on the AP view because the sacrum is in the area of interest. So it sits right over the sacral spine. Some people may shield. Others aren't really going to worry about it at all. Uh, shield both on laterals with another shield along the posterior surface. So we'll get to that lead shield in the back that kind of cleans up the scatter. Our basic positions are going to be the AP lateral and the spot film. The optionals are the obliques, flexion extension views, scoliosis, bending, um, AP axial for L5. A bunch of different views we can do for the lower back, but typically AP lateral and spot are what you'll see mostly. The AP image is going to do it at 40 inches. You can't extend the distance if they are a bit taller. Um, you are going to use a table bucket for this. We do need a table bucket to kind of clean up this image. 14 by 17 is going to be lengthwise. You're going to do this on expiration. It's not as important on the AP, but when we get to the lateral, we want to make sure that they're doing it right, so it should be on expiration. Perpendicular tubes, no tube angle. Make sure you center to the level of the iliac crest. Um, typically on the AP, you can center one finger above the iliac crest, just because you can drop a little bit of the symphysis pubis. Collimate side to side to the SI joints, so when we come down to the SI joints, that is going to be our widest point, so it should be about 7 inches going across, 17 inches long. For men, shield below the pubis, like we talked about. Knees should be bent slightly, that's going to take away a little bit of the lordotic arch. 
No rotation seen in the size of the transverse processes and spines processes equidistant from each pedicle. So as we talked about when we're looking at our APs, we want to make sure that those are straight and equal distance away from the spinous process going straight down the middle. Spinous processes are pretty thick, so you can see them quite easily as they go in uh, inferior down towards the bottom portion of the body. Lateral and lumbar spine, basically the same stuff. Expiration is going to be key on this. What we want to do is we want to get the lower portions of the lungs out of the way. So we have to do this on expiration. So as we count off, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, a lot of times you can see the lungs kind of going over that. If you do it on inspiration, you'll see the cosmophrenic angle is right over here. And if you see that, you're adding a double density over the vertebra. So it's not ideal uh, for the radiologist that's reading the image. Perpendicular tube, make sure you CR to the level of the iliac crest. If you want to get a little bit more of the sacrum on there, you can actually sing center one finger below the crest on there. Uh, you only need about half the size of the IR, so again about 7 by 17. You're going to check rotation a couple places. You're going to check it at the ribs, so as you're looking at it like a chest x-ray, you want to make sure the ribs are superimposed on top. And you want to see down here, what these are called the greater sciatic notches. You can't see them all the way down here, but they should be on the same vertical line going up and down. That way we know the hips are right on top of each other, and the ribs will indicate that the shoulders are squared. Uh, patients should be in a neutral lateral position. They shouldn't be flexed or extended all that much unless you're doing a flexion extension views. What you should see on this, in terms of the rotations, the intervertebral foramina should open up on the lateral view going all the way down. So basically the stacking of the inferior and superior notches will kind of create that open space going all the way up. It's the same as the T-spine, so nothing different from last week. The L5 S1 spot dome, you're going to do this at 40 inches, table buck as well. You are going to use a smaller size cassette though. You can do this on an 8x10 or in our class you can use a 10x12. Really they just need to hold still on this one. Because we're past the level of the costophrenic angles, we're not so much worried about the lungs getting over this area. So really they don't even have to hold their breath. All they have to do is just hold still. You're going to angle down about 5 degrees, uh, 5 to 8 degrees caudal. Um, Usually about four to five is what I normally use. That's going to change a little bit based on how the spine is crooked. Um, maybe if they've got a real bend in the spine, if you build up the bottom of the hip with a wedge, that can also help a little bit as well. CR, an inch and a half inferior to the crest and two inches posterior to the ASIS. So you're going to use your main landmarks, your ASIS, and your crest up here to find your position. There will be a lot of text that will tell you how to do this differently. Just take advantage of working with different people and try to find out what works best for you. We'll definitely show it to you in class, but there are many, many ways to get that uh, centered for the L5-S1 area. Uh, close four-sided collimation. This is not good collimation. It should be collimated just specifically to this area right in here. We want to see the joint space. We want to see the entire vertebra, and we want to see the posterior area through back into here just in case it's slipping out. Seeing a little bit of the vertebra above as well to see if it is actually sliding forward or if it's in the correct position. Uh, lead should be posteriorly, so on the table you should have a little bit of lead on there. That'll help clean up a bit of the scatter. If the spine is curving towards the right, then a cephalic angle should be used. So normally we are going to use a caudal angle, but if the spine on the AP is going straight down and then curves to the right and then comes back, then we're going to angle the opposite way to open up that space. Oblique lumbar spines, these are done specifically to see the zygopopsial joints. Um, we're not looking at the foramen on this one like we are on the C-spine, but we are want to see those articulations between um, the superior and inferior articular processes. We're going to use basically an 11 by 14 collimating size. You can actually collimate that a little bit side to side as well. Expiration, so similar to our lateral, we're going to do this on expiration. Perpendicular tube, so no tube angle. We're going to center an inch and a half above the crest. Okay. So we're going to find your crest here. Just center about an inch and a half above that. You only need about half the size of the IR, so we're just focused just on the spine itself and the Scotty dogs, which we'll explain. There is going to be a 45 degree body angle, so you need to make sure when the patient rolls up into an LPO or RPO position, they have a sponge behind them so they can hold that position at a 45 degree angle. That is what's going to show the Scotty dogs the best. These are always going to be done bilateral because on the 
RPO and LPO images, we want to see the downside zygopop seal joints, which is a bit different um, than what we've been covering um, with the cervical spine and the T-spine. Scotty Dog is made up of all the different parts of the anatomy we've talked about. We've got the basic transverse process going out. This little nose here is going to create is the other transverse process that's a little bit shortened. The pedicle is going to be the little eye part. The in, uh, inferior articular process is going to be the front foot. Then you have an interior. The other side of that process is on the opposite side of the spine is going to create the other lower leg on there. Um, superior articular process is going to make up the ear. Um, you're going to see this quite a bit when you do these obliques. As we look at the next slide here, you can see the little Scotty dog here. This is this little head with his nose pointed that way. It's the front foot, body, tail, kind of gets washed out a little bit. Um, when we're looking at anatomy wise, it's very good at finding if there's a pars fracture through the neck. If you look through this area right through here should be intact. If there is a kind of a black line going through it, then you can assume that there is a little bit of a fracture on there. Scoliosis. These are done at 60 inches. Some techs will do them at 72 inches when you're using an upright bucky. You can use a 14 by 17 cassette and piece it together, or some places have those long film, long uh, IRs, sorry, at 14 by 36. It's going to be done on expiration. Perpendicular tube again. See so are about midpoint of the spinal column. We're trying to get the entire portion of it on there unless we're doing two images. We're columnate side to side to the SI joints depending on the degree of the scoli. So very similar to the AP lumbar spine. For girls, we are going to do those images PA instead. We want to decrease the amount of uh, radiation that's exposed to the breasts. AP, we're not so much worried about it for boys, so we will do those boys AP instead. 90% of reduction to the breast just simply by doing it PA as opposed to AP. Make sure you shield the gonads and breasts if possible. There are some magnets with lead shields on them that we can kind of put on the collimating housing. These are usually done in orthopedics, so not quite as common, but you can ask your techs about it and see if they have those um, available at your clinics. So just representing a couple of scoli images here, a little bit more serious one on the right. Visually, sometimes you can see it if the patient's skinny enough, you can actually see the spine kind of curving around. Some pathology, ankylosing spondylitis, basically called a stiffening of the vertebra. Um, men get this about three times more than women uh, do. We usually start with small erosions right on the corners of the vertebral body. And since there's a little erosion there, what happens is bone will attack that area and then it will bridge that area, making the spine... Uh, super immobile. Um, it's also known as bamboo spine. Spondylolisthesis. Uh, basically, this is just a spine slippage here. That forward slip of one vertebra relative to another. So what we're looking at is we're looking at that contour line of the vertebra going forward. If one happens to slide forward a little bit, then they have some spondylolisthesis. Leg pain or weakness from walking. Common symptoms. Um, when they sit or lean forward, those tend to ease up a little bit. This shows a little bit of pathology here, how it affects the nerve. Sciatica is a big problem. Um, the patients will have pain down one leg or numbness. Um, that can generally be fixed by fusing a couple of vertebrae together with a couple of screws. Uh, two pairs of facets. This is going to talk about the PARS a little bit. We'll let you look at this on your own since we're running out of a little bit of time here. Um, the pars fracture, though, with spondylolysis, is a breakdown or fracture of the pars interarticularis. So this right here, that's going to be that representative fracture in the doggy's neck on the obliques. Spondylolisthesis, forward slippage. So as a result of this area becoming weak or fractured, what happens is the vertebra starts to slide forward, and that puts a little bit of pressure on the intervertebral disc. Can fix this a little bit by fusing these together. Sometimes you can take a little bit of bone out of the iliac crest, put it in between the vertebra, and the vertebra will kind of sense that there's bone going across there and kind of fill in the blanks. Bolus fails, maybe yoga can help. Definitely important to have a strong core for people that have back problems on there. Hopefully you've enjoyed this PowerPoint presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask or wait for the laboratory and we will cover 
the rest of it there.